Hey everybody, welcome back for the third installment of this series on Apache NiFi anti-patterns. I'm Mark Payne, I'm one of the co-creators of Apache NiFi, and today I'm going to take some time to talk about low balancing data across your cluster. Now, before we jump into exactly how NiFi handles this and when you should and shouldn't do this, I wanna kind of take a step back and talk about some of the general concepts of low balancing data first. So first of all, what exactly do we mean when we talk about low balancing data across the cluster? Well, in general, what we're talking about is taking the data that's on one node in your NiFi cluster and spreading that across the entire cluster so that you can parallelize the processing of that data. Now, a lot of big data processing frameworks and streaming uh, frameworks such as Apache Storm, Spark Streaming, MapReduce, all of these frameworks are going to kind of handle this for you behind the scenes. And so a lot of newcomers to NiFi are kind of shocked whenever they find out that NiFi doesn't automatically distribute the data between the nodes. And so we'll kind of look at why that is, first of all. So we've seen several different benchmarks published about uh, where people take a simple algorithm like PageRank and they'll run that on their laptops, and then they'll run it on, let's say, a 100-node uh, complex event processing uh, engine. And what they'll see is that they can actually process the data faster on a lowly laptop than this huge infrastructure. But at the same time, on the other hand, if you are going to train a deep learning model, and you want to train that against petabytes of data, well, good luck doing that on your laptop, right? So there's got to be somewhere that you draw the line when you're trying to decide, well, should I distribute data across a cluster or should I just process it on the node that has the data already? So where do we draw that line? Well, what it all really boils down to is is the efficiency gained by parallelizing the processing of the data enough to offset the cost of pushing that data to another node? If it is, then you should go ahead and load balance. You should push that data across your cluster. If it's not, then don't bother pushing the data across the cluster. Just process the data where you already have it. And so in NiFi, we really kind of give you the ability to make that decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, so in your data flow, you can choose where you want to start pushing that data across the cluster, where you don't want to. By default, it's not going to push data anywhere across the cluster. And for most data flows, you probably don't need to actually distribute the data across the cluster. So we'll talk about where we do and don't want to distribute that data and how often we want to distribute the data across the cluster as we look at how we can use the mechanisms in NiFi to handle this. So let's take a look. All right, so in the UI now, we've got a flow here that's pretty straightforward. It starts with a consumed Kafka record processor. So we're going to get some purchase order data from Kafka. That purchase order data has a zip code in it, but no city or state. So we're going to use the lookup record to perform some enrichment and grab the city and state and put that into the record itself. We're then going to partition by that city that we just looked up, and we're going to do some routing logic on that city. And if the city happens to be one of the cities that we're interested in, we're going to publish the data to a different Kafka topic, in this case, special purchase orders. So it's a pretty straightforward flow, but there's quite a bit of processing happening here. So what we can do is we can configure this connection here. And in the settings tab, there's a load balancing strategy. So by default, it's set to do not load balance. So whatever data shows up on this node is going to stay on that node. We've got a few different strategies that we can use to move the data around the cluster. But for the vast majority of cases, what we're actually going to want to use is round robin. So we're going to just spread the data evenly across the cluster. I'm not going to get too much into the other load balancing strategies. You can read the documentation on those if you're interested. 
But the first anti-pattern that I'll point out here is the low balance compression. Now, typically, whenever you're moving data around a cluster, you don't really want to compress that data because you've typically got a really high throughput link between the different nodes in a given cluster. It's not always the case, but it typically is. And we see a lot of times people start uh, choosing that they want to compress attributes and content when they'll really benefit by, by not performing any compression at all. So we don't really want to uh, pay the cost of that compression and the decompression. So in this case, we'll just choose round robin and do not compress, and we can hit apply. And now any data that shows up in this connection is automatically going to get spread evenly across the cluster. And we can see that low balancing is happening because we have this icon here on the connection. The other connections you can see don't have that icon, so that's just an indicator that low balance is configured. If we hover over that, it's actually going to tell us that uh, we're using the round robin strategy and we're not using any compression at all. So it's a pretty simple configuration change to enable this capability. But what we often see people start doing is they'll build a flow that looks like this. So they've decided that they want to pull data into the cluster and they want to do a lot of processing. They want to make sure that that data stays spread across all of the nodes in the cluster. So they'll configure the first connection here for, uh, for round robin load balancing. And then they'll choose round robin for the second connection and the third and the fourth. So conceptually, it makes sense. But what ends up happening is that means that once we've pulled the data in from Kafka, we're going to distribute it across all of the nodes in the cluster. We're then going to perform the enrichment step. And we're immediately then going to start moving that data all throughout the cluster again. We'll then go ahead and partition that data and we'll move it all throughout the cluster again. Now, once the data has already been evenly distributed across the cluster from the first connection, there's really no need to start pushing the data between the nodes again because it's going to stay on whatever node uh, already has that data. So typically what we want to do is we want to say do not load balance for all of these connections except for that first one. So now when we pull data into the cluster, we'll go ahead and distribute it across the nodes. And then each node in parallel will process uh, that part of the data that it owns. So this looks pretty good. Well, once we turn off uh, low balancing here, this looks pretty good, but we can actually do a lot better. Because if we consider the source of the data, it's Apache Kafka and Kafka already gives us queuing semantics. What that means is every node in the cluster is already going to be working to pull its share of the data so that it can process it. There's no need to pull the data and then distribute it across the cluster because each node's already got its own share. Now, there are some caveats to this, which is if we have more nodes in our NiFi cluster, then we have partitions on the Kafka topic then we may end up in a situation where the data doesn't get evenly spread across all of the nodes. And so we may actually want to round robin it in that scenario. But the vast majority of the time, we don't really want to round robin after we pull data from Kafka. We'll say do not load balance. And just because Kafka is going to give us those queuing semantics, we know that the data is already going to be low balance across the cluster. And of course, that's not just specific to Kafka. Uh, if we were using uh, consume JMS or any sort of uh, pub sub mechanism that's going to allow us to, to have queuing semantics, we'll already get that data distributed across a cluster for free. So if we're not going to use it in this situation, where does it make sense? Well, generally any source that doesn't offer queuing semantics is going to be a good candidate for load balancing the data. So if we take the same flow that's going to uh, get these purchase orders, do some enrichment to add the city, partition by that city, and do the routing. But in this case, we've changed it 
so that we're pulling data from a GCS or Google Compute Storage bucket, we no longer have those queuing semantics. So in this case, the list GCS bucket can only actually be run on primary node. That means that the listing is coming on to just that one node. So what we can do is we can perform that listing and then we can fetch the data. And then once we fetched it, we can go ahead and use round robin and we can evenly distribute that data across the cluster. Now, if we were to try to perform this list GCS bucket on all nodes in the cluster, what would happen is that we would end up with all nodes getting that same listing. So all of the nodes would get the same listing and then pull the same data, and we would end up with just a duplicate on each node. So if you go to configure this processor, we'll see that uh, the execution can only be on primary node in order to prevent that from happening. So this is what we'll typically see. We'll see something like a list GCS bucket followed by a fetch GCS bucket and then we'll use the round robining, the round robin low balancing strategy to spread that data across the cluster. But we can do a lot better than that because at this point, we've already used that one node to pull the data from GCS. It's already done a lot of that hard work. We're then going to read that data and push it to another node. So rather than using this approach, Let's configure this connection, say do not load balance here, and instead load balance at this point. Because the way that this processor works is it's going to put out a flow file for every object that it finds in that GCS bucket. So if we're just a little bit smarter about where we configure that load balancing, we'll now go ahead and distribute that listing across the entire cluster. We don't have to pull the data into a single node and then push the data around. We can push just the listing across the cluster. And now every single node in our cluster, it's going to get its own share of that listing. And each node in our cluster can now pull all of that data in parallel and then handle all of the processing. So this gives us a very scalable, very high performance approach. And in fact, this is the same pattern that I used recently to write a blog post where I explored NiFi's uh, scaling and performance capabilities. So I used Google Compute Engine to actually scale out NiFi onto 100 different nodes, and then a 500 node cluster, and then a 1000 node cluster. And we were able to see that even at scaling out to a thousand nodes, NiFi was able to handle that scalability quite well. We could probably go quite a bit bigger than that if we had the resources. And we were able to scale up a single node to the point that it was able to handle easily a million events per second. So we could actually process in this 1000 node cluster up to a billion events per second doing something very similar to this. In, the, in that case, it was using log data, but it was doing very similar type of processing where it was uh, optionally decompressing the data, it was doing some enrichment, it was doing some routing, and then eventually pushing data back to GCS. So clearly we can hit some really high numbers in terms of performance and scalability, but we couldn't do that if we were coming through here and configuring load balancing on every single one of these connections. So in order to hit those really high types of performance and scalability numbers, we definitely need to make sure that we're following the best practices. And so in terms of best practices for load balancing, the biggest thing that we want to consider is that we want to make sure that we're not load balancing constantly throughout our flow, we're only load balancing where it makes sense and that we're really taking into account where in the flow we perform that load balancing so that we can minimize the amount of data that we're actually pushing across our cluster. And that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.